Okay, there it is. So this is Hayes Omega's Toyota Previa. All right, it's a 1991 model. It is the DX model. Like I said, I think that's the middle of the ground model. So I want to say, so like how the Galant VR4 is pretty much the top end model Galant VR4. This one is the mid, the mid, mid model. There's not even a badge on it. <laughs> but, but I think this is, I'm pretty sure this is the DX model. Okay. Yeah, there should be a little badge that says DX or LE on it or something. The LE is the top end model. All right. This is a rear wheel drive van. Okay. Um, uh, they did sell the all track version, but this is not it. I wish I had the all track version because I got stuck in the sand a couple times in this van and it sucks, man. <laughs> Supposedly the all track models have good, uh, good traction too. All right, so there's the interior. Like I said, I used it as a cargo van. Uh, I didn't use it as a people mover van, okay? I do have, it did come with the bench seat. I think this one seats one, two, it seats five in the back. Yeah, it seats five in the back and two in the front. All right, so that's like uh, seven. This is a seven passenger van, okay, I, I, if you had everything. But the cool thing, one thing I do love about this van is look at these folding up seats, okay? The seats fold up and then you can attach it there. And then, you know, then if you do want to have seats, then all you have to do is flip them down, all right? It's kind of annoying because I put all this stuff here. So I don't really flip them down. And I also, I kind of use the seats as like a storage thing. I put stuff behind it, okay? There's actually a subwoofer in behind that one, okay? <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's go. Uh Let's go take a look at the exterior first. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about this van. Um, yeah, okay, so, so in a nutshell, this is a 1991 Toyota Previa DX model. Um, it's a rear wheel drive and it has a five speed manual. That's the, that's the special thing about this van. It's a very, very rare five speed Toyota Previa. These, they did not make too many of these in the United States. Most of them were automatic. So that's what makes it special. It has this guy five-speed transmission all right it says four but this is from a Toyota Tercel so <laughs> so one two if it goes in it's three four five and then there's a reverse all right um, in my opinion I do not like this sh the the five-speed on this van as much it's just it's not in a good place I don't like the way it, the throws are and everything it's just not a very good five-speed van where, where the Toyota cargo van was much better I felt I, I like the transmission on the Toyota cargo much better um, also another thing special about the five-speed is it has a tachometer and it doesn't work anymore <laughs> fortunately okay um, this van has 248,093 miles okay so that's uh, how many miles it's gonna have when I retired it just shy of 250 unfortunately I wanted to get this thing to 300,000 um, one of my big complaints about this van, uh, well, yeah, yeah, I'll talk about the pros and cons later, but, but anyway, yeah, this has 248,000 miles on it. I bought the van when it had 218, so if you do the math, I think I put like about, yeah, if you do the math, I only put 30,000 miles on this van. I actually didn't put too many miles on it, actually. I didn't drive this van a whole lot after, uh, after I retired it from, uh, doing delivery work is what I'm going to say. Okay, um, and, uh. And yeah, so there it is. That's the Toyota Previa. So like I said, it can seat five. There is a bench seat that goes here and that's actually in my room right now. I'm using it as a couch. <laughs> and, uh, and then there's these two seats that fold down for cargo. All right. Um, so a couple things I, uh, let's go over the, some exterior modifications. I added this wing, okay. So some of the Previas had wings. This did not have the wing before, okay. And I Plasti dipped it. And yeah, I'm so I apologize. It's really, really dirty right now. Okay, there is a rear wiper on it. There is a backup camera that I installed on it, and it works great. It's nice to have a backup camera on this van because it's so long. That's what I'm gonna say. It, it also does have aftermarket tint on it. It's I think that's like a a 15% or a 5% tint. It's pretty dark, and it's kind of got some scratches and stuff in it. Um, yeah. So like I said, the seats fold down uh this has an exhaust on it all right um it has the uh mugen style exhaust that's what i want to say so you can see there's a kind of there's an extra pipe that makes it longer it gives you a better mid-end is what i'm gonna say it has a silencer on it if i if i was to do it again i would not um i wouldn't put an exhaust on the van it's just freaking loud dude um 
but it actually has a Chrysler Sebring pre-muffler too back there to quiet it down. Okay. Yeah, see, there's like another muffler back there. The muffler on the Previa is massive, okay? And it looks like it's held up well over the years. That's what I'm gonna say. Also, this has a Toyota Previa um, mud guards. Actually, I might take those off and sell them before I send it to the thing. Yeah, so those are a aftermarket, or I think you can get them from the dealer. I think I got it. I think I imported it from Europe to get those. It doesn't have them in the front, but just in the rear. I just wanted them in there. <laughs> um, also, it has Plasti Dip bumpers. Uh, they're black Plasti Dip, as you can see, like a lot of it is rubbed off. Like I said, I use this van as a utility vehicle. I put slide stuff in and slide packages out and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, and here some lady built, hit me when I was pulling out of her freaking driveway or something. Um, also, it has a. Uh, my Mitsubishi Eclipse wheels, okay? These are some Mitsubishi Eclipse spider wheels that I had on my 1995 Mitsubishi Eclipse RS. Um, I decided to put them on this van. I, it, it looks great on this van, by the way. <laughs> and it's running the 205-55 16 tires. Uh, I think those are a little bit smaller than the stock tire size. And there's a reason for that. Uh, I want it to spin a little bit faster so I get a, more, a little more acceleration. This has a supercharged... Uh, uh, rear end on it okay the supercharged rear end has a wider gear ratio so it'll cruise better it won't cruise at such a high rpm okay there's the spare all right another thing that this van has that's special is it has a tow hitch i think this is a draw tight no, i don't remember it's either a curtain or a draw tight sticker is missing from it <laughs> it's not there anymore but this is a modified hitch i had modified i had taken the uh I took it to a welding shop and I had them install this two inch receiver on it so I could have a two inch receiver for towing and like it I could put like a hitch carrier and stuff but I now really didn't wind up using a hitch carrier but I just wanted to also for bike racks I wanted to use a two inch uh, bike rack receiver okay so that will probably be going to the scrap yard with the van um, also this the muffler has a little si tunable silencer on it um, like I said this fan is really loud with an ex uh, aftermarket exhaust so don't do it <laughs> I think if I was to do it again I would actually use the same exhaust that's on my Galant Vera 4 I had installed this turbo muffler but turbo cars are really quiet so um, but I installed this turbo muffler it was huge and it was quiet and it flows really good Come better than stock is what I want to say so that's the muffler I would use for this fan if I was to do it again <laughs> Okay, I would use a, a super turbo muffler. Um, and it has these uh, 205 55 16 tires on the Mitsubishi wheels. I think I'm just going to go send it to the scrapyard with those. I've got a bunch of LED lights. So when, once these LED lights started coming out, I installed a whole lot of them. There's a lot of dead bugs in the front of it. Um, the earlier model Previas didn't have such good headlights. And these ones are really yellowing. Um, this actually fell out. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there's supposed to be another one of these there. These are clear corners. Um, that I get basically, basically there's no, there's no yellow, there's no amber here. There's no amber reflector on it. It's just all clear. And I think it looks nicer with it clear because it matches the headlights. But yeah, it uh, kind of, oh, the, the wiring ripped out too. So <laughs> it's okay, don't worry about it, man. We're, we're sending it to the scrapyard. But yeah, this, this fell out. Apparently, this is a kind of common problem with pre Previas when they get old, is that the uh, the brackets, um, the bracket broke here. So basically, this, this tiny little bracket is what holds it on to the headlight. Okay, yeah, so this little bracket here, this is the one that, uh, um, this is what hold, really holds it to the, it holds it to somewhere around where the headlight is. And it fell out when I was driving on the i5. I'm like, whoa, what the heck do I do? It's actually in the van right now. <laughs> there it is. So yeah, I don't know. That's just gonna go with the van. I don't care. Um, and I, I have a feeling that this side had the exact same problem because there's tape. There is tape. There's a tape holding. There's marks from tapes holding the side marker in. Okay. And this cracked here. Yeah. So not in the best of the shape is all I wanna say. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I moved this license plate to the side here, so it looks a little cooler. But it's all banged up now. Um, it's got these LED lights on it. Um, the lighting kind of sucks on this van. Um, this is the uh, this is the Zenki version, so the 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 opening isn't as big on this one. 
Uh, this is it's kind of got a more uh, rounded shape. That's what I'm gonna say. The the Zane, the the Koki one has a kind of like a flatter shape, kind of kind of like how the Eclipse and the the Eclipse 2GA and 2GB are. The 2GA was kind of pointier than the B, and it look it look happier. <laughs> so say okay. Anyway, yeah. So uh, this has a uh, rear drum brakes. All right, and like I said, it has a rear end from uh, basically what what did I do? Uh, all I did was change the the pumpkin. That's what I did. I pulled the I pulled the carrier out with the with the gear set in it, and then I um, and then I plugged it in there. Okay. I've never had a problem with the um, the drivetrain on this. Uh, I have a feeling that it would probably be if I was to keep the van, it would probably be a good idea to change the clutch and the master cylinder and all that stuff because um, it's probably about time to do that. Um, but I've never had any real problems with it, other than like yeah, it is. The van is hard to shift now, okay? It's harder harder to get in here. You saw me trying to shift it in the third earlier. It didn't do that. So it doesn't want to go in the first gear is what, what it is. And the, it's kind of annoying, <laughs> so I'm going to say, okay? Um, so another modification. Oh, well, yeah, there's like window tent all around because I use it as a camper van. I wanted privacy. You know, you want privacy, right? <laughs> and then uh, there's... Um, there's a subwoofer here. It's a really one of those small all-in-one subwoofers. Um, it works all right. And there's a little light here too. Um, yeah, and so that's just like to drown out some of the exhaust noise. Um, my my new uh, my Rav4. I will not be putting an exhaust on my Rav4. He's maybe getting too, a little too old for that. <laughs> so let's say you can see I've got a lot of tie-down straps in here. I use this van for towing a whole lot. So yeah, there's a tow hitch, like I mentioned. Um, you'll see this video. You'll see this van in a lot of my uh, videos when I go race tracks or, or dirt biking and stuff. Yeah, this is the home base. They call it the battle van. All right. Um, it's got a 400 watt uh, inverter right here, Harbor Freight inverter. Okay. It's kind of hiding. You can see the thing here, and I have a relay that turns it on over there. So, so I got some power in there, and then I have uh, two extra. 12 volt outlets here okay that directly connect to the battery so I could actually hook like a solar panel up to it so it's got three outlets it's got one here the switched one the original one and has two 12 volt outlets here that are always hot okay I've got uh, some fancy pedals racing pedals <laughs> it, it helps it helps heal and toe I, I like I like it um, I will probably leave it with the van um, it's got some all-weather kind of floor mats. I never really drove too many people in this van um, There's a cup holder. I actually bored out one of the holes here so you can put a bigger cup in it It's a nice cup holder. It's one of these dealies that goes in there. I've never had a real problem with it All right, this is actually not the original deck that came with the car There was a Sony deck in here before that my uncle installed I think and it went bad like it just up and didn't work one day so so I bought this one and I installed it this one has a nice USB deal here and then this is my phone mount all right I, there's really not a good place to put a phone mount in here so I, I got one of these CD mount thingies and I stuck it under here this cover this cover is actually the cover for the speakers and the fuses okay that's where you would find your fuses and the speakers and the, and the relays and all that stuff this is here because I, uh, I when I'm driving I want to get all the cool air to myself the blower system is not very good on the earlier previous is what I want to say um, I think that I think they fixed that in the newer previous but this the earlier ones it was not very good and the AC is not very good on this van and this uh, this van has like a slow leak on it too is what I want to say okay and there's also extra power here this is a um, this is an airbed pump that I use uh, when I sleep in here I use an airbed Okay. okay, so I've also got these kind of rubber um, mats. I might I might keep some of these. Okay, and these are some of the original floor mats in here. Like I said, I took the I took the brackets out for the seat. I think I'm gonna keep the seat as my sofa. It's pretty comfy. I'm kind of kind of used to it. <laughs> um, the interior in the Previa is not that good. Okay, there's also a nice bright LED light right here. Okay, um, the way these work is you would unhook this. You would swing this out here, all right, and then I would have to take off. I would have to move all this this rubber stuff here, and then there's a there's a bar where these claws hook onto, and then you you would lower it and it would clamp onto those bars, all right, and then and then there would be there's a there's a like a, a pull tab that would make the the seat go up. They actually, I think, I think, 
I think they still use these. They use this seating system in the Land Cruiser, I think, because uh, I saw a Land, uh, one of those Lexus, the Lexus version of the Land Cruiser, and it had an electric version of this. All you had to do is press a button, and it like moved and like it latched itself down and stuff. But I really like this. This is really good. This is a good way. You know, it's a better. It's it's a good alternative to stow and go seating. But the stow and go seating, what I don't like, is you've got this. It's not flat. Okay, you've got a big like open thing here when you take the seats out. Yeah, I kind of don't like that. And you lose, I think you lose the, the spare tire holder. This, this actually has the spare tire holder right here. Okay, there's a little cage that holds it. Okay. Uh, what else can we talk about? Yeah, and it is cavernous in here, man. It is huge. All right, and I got this moving blanket here so I don't mess up the interior. It does have interior. It's pretty nice. I've got like... Um, I've got these kind of extension cords and outlets all over it so I can hook stuff up. I never really use them because um, I didn't want to run the battery down. It would be nice to uh, add like a solar panel system to this. I, ha I had made a solar panel for this van and then somebody had actually broken the window in this van a couple months ago, man. Um, this is not actually the original window. <laughs> I think I got this from a window in, at the junkyard. I actually had, yeah, I had a vent shade on it. I had one of those, it was a kind of a knockoff vent shade. They have these really big ones for the Toyota Previa or to Toyota Vans and stuff. And then, yeah, this one is actually pretty cracked. This one didn't last. It, the, the problem is it was a knockoff one. So <laughs> it does have power mirrors, but the I think the this power mirror doesn't work. It does have power windows too. Um, this window doesn't work. I think the motor's wearing out on it or something. Um, and let's go take a look under Aha, the hood. Okay, so here's the interesting stuff about a Previa, all right? So you got your windshield washer here, and you've got an oil reservoir, okay? You don't see a lot of these on vehicles nowadays, all right? So this actually at, ha, holds extra oil. You, it can actually hold, I think, two extra, yeah, two extra quarts of oil, two liters of extra oil. Um, and so when the oil, when, when the engine senses the oil is low, it actually injects this oil into the engine all right to top it off so like if they made they made this van like idiot proof all right you can you can really abuse it and it would it, you know it could do its own stuff all right? all right so but you should not use this to add oil to the van when you change the oil you actually change the oil from the uh underneath the passenger seat so the engine for this van is underneath the seat all right you were pretty much sitting on top of it and then they've made this ingenious system called the sad shaft all right, it's a auxiliary drive shaft is what it's called. And it goes from the front of the engine to here, and then it drives your accessories. It drives their power steering and the, the cooling fan, the radiator and all that stuff. And, and then yeah, your alternator. And then the air conditioning also. Um, it also, also one modification, I know that's what one modification did. I use a, a strap, <laughs> one of these straps is a freaking thing. It's got some brighter headlights too, headlight bulbs. It's not super duper bright though. Yeah, it's about as bright as it gets. Oh, some, some of the light, oh yeah, that's that's right. So yeah, this ripped out. This actually ripped out here, so these don't work anymore on the side anymore, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> some of the LEDs don't work on it anymore. Yeah, man, I tell you, this van is like freaking battled out, dude. Um, but that's, that's one the reason why I wanna get a, a, a RAV4 also. Um, but yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, yeah, so like I said, it has an oil reservoir system. So when it gets low on oil, it actually pumps oil in there. So you don't really have to do anything, you know. It looks like it's already pumped. It pumped one in there. <laughs> I just make sure when I go off on a trip, I have like one here. Then you don't have to carry extra oil with you, right? Um, and some of this, this is like a, a pump here. Um, I think there's some power steering fluid and stuff in there, extra coolant. There's some jumper cables in there, I think. There's a lot of space, extra space here in the front that you could put stuff. That's what this cover is to protect it from heat from the engine. Um, so one problem with this van also is uh, the auxiliary drive shaft, the sad shaft. Uh, the bushings are going bad, all right? And it's very hard to replace it, <laughs> this van. That's one of the problems with these vans. When they get old, the sad shaft bushings deteriorate and then you replace them and they break again, so. It needs to be like perfectly balanced and I never replace it on this van. I actually have the sad shaft bushing um, It's like a little revolver thing that you're supposed to put in there. It's like a dampener sort of and uh, I never got around to installing it and it's just gonna 
you know um, it's it's kind of a difficult install is what I want to say but so I would just rather yeah you know what I'm gonna trade the van in anyway so so yeah <laughs> okay all right yeah darkness is upon us so. so this does have a uh, a backup camera that I installed on it it's right here okay that's that's the backup camera thingy and it's so nice having it so what I'm gonna say it because this is a really long van it's hard to, hard to oh yeah you, if I turn it on you'll just see the sky but so this is the key right here okay and when so it's wired it's wired so the uh, it's wired so that the uh, uh, when you turn the running light on it turns on all right there it is <laughs> and you can just see the sky right now it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, so there you go. You can kind of see, you can see the sky. If I turn the light off, the whole thing turns off. If I turn the headlight on, the whole thing will turn on, okay? So um, the reason for that is I think the, some, something is wrong with the reverse, reverse light circuit, circuit on this. I had it attached to, to the to reverse light to trigger it and it like, the reverse light doesn't work anymore on this van, okay? All right, and then um, these these seats are not from this van also. This is from, a gray, the seats are supposed to be blue in this van. These are gray seats. I think I got this from an LE. It has these, you can move these. I think the reason they didn't want these here is because they kind of, it kind of gets in the way of the shifter. I guess it's kind of easier to shift when when it's down here. I don't like where the, where the shifter is here. I think it's too far from the steering wheel, you know? Um. There's like an ashtray right here. Pretty cool, There's a bunch of receipts in there. I'm gonna have to clean up this whole van. There's a huge glove box right here, okay? Huge, like I'm telling you, you can put a whole bunch of stuff in there, all right? Um, yeah, and then they're, they got these armrests here and you can adjust them any height you want. It's pretty awesome, I like it. Okay, it does have AC and it does have cruise control. AC is not very good on this van. Like I said, the blower sucks on it, man. Uh, and it kind of eats up more gas when it does. It's got a little dash mat. I might save this and sell it. Um, yeah, and then this is a this is a switch for the inverter that turns the inverter on and off. There's a relay that activates it, and you can hear that you just heard the inverter just die. Um, yeah. And then let me go show you where the uh, the engine bay is, guys. <laughs> so on a Toyota Previa, the engine bay is behind the driver's seat. So if I moved this, I think you got to do. If you have a seat back here, it's kind of funky to get to it. But yeah, just make sure there's nothing behind it. And then there's a there's a switch right. Here. But anyway, um, so there's the seat. All you got to do is flip this latch right here. See this yellow latch right here, and then. It, it tilts back lift up the carpet here unlock this and then you can open this and then there's the engine that's where you would um, add oil basically check the oil and add the oil okay and then hit either PCV is here and a bunch of other stuff I think uh, this car this van failed smog a couple times um, one the catalytic converter got stolen and I had to put another one in and it wound up what was the problem was the uh, the EGR valve, the, it needed a new modulator or something, um, vacuum modulator. So um, so that's what I'm hoping the RAV4 will be better because it's practically an EV. Okay, okay. yeah, so actually this van actually does have a distributor cap on it. So it's, it's yeah, it's that old, guys. <laughs> it still has, they still have distributor caps, all right? Um, also, to change the spark plugs on this, you got to take the passenger seat out and then there's another access panel that pops out there and then you can get access to the... Uh, spark plugs uh, one of the one of the problems with these vans are that the valve cover leaks okay and it's like way up under the engine it's not easy to get to um, the reason for that is the bolts are too long on it and they bottom out and when they bottom out they don't press on the valve cover that much so you got to add washers to it so that so like it presses on the gaskets okay so you would always get uh, you would always get uh, leaks and like ex like ex oil burning smells and stuff, and that's from the oil dripping onto the exhaust, which is right next to where the valve cover is. <laughs> okay, this van actually does have factory headers too, as well. It's got tuned headers. Can you believe that? Um, okay, and there's a little pocket here where I keep my Panda here, and this is where I keep my spare keys. I always have the keys inside. Yeah, actually, that, that's where these keys go. Okay, this is spare. I used to have put two keys in the van, so like. Uh, I can open and close it easily. 
I will just keep this here. I'm gonna keep my Mr. Panda here. This guy used to be in my Eclipse too. I guess he'll be moving to my RAV4 now. <laughs> okay, there's the, uh, this is the little cubby, our little center center cargo thingy from, from the other the other Previa. Basically, I just strapped it onto the carpet. That's the only thing holding it on. That was not, that did not come with this van. Um, interesting to note, the, the parking brake is on the left side here, okay? Basically, you can just open it. <laughs> One of the cool things about this van is you can just let the parking brake go and you can push it. And plus it's a manual, so if you got it in neutral, you could move the van. <laughs> It moves pretty easily. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me put, pull that up. Okay. Um, yeah. So and then the shifter is there. All right. Um, these are the controls. There's a cruise control here. Um, you got wipers here. This is the DX model. It doesn't have the kind of different um, speed settings on it. Um, there's the cup holder here, like I mentioned. There's ashtray here. There's another ashtray here down here too. There's so many compartments in this van. I love it, dude. This here, it's got a, I got a bunch of fuses and the multi-tool here, remote control for the stereo. All right, and then there's the ashtray right here. There's actually an ashtray behind me also in the passenger side um, in the back in the cargo area. It's a cup holder. Um, you've got your fan controls here. There's a rear heat. So there's a rear heater for this van for the for the passengers. It's got a rear defroster, it's got a hazard, and I just, there's an AC right here, the AC button's okay. right here. Um, this is your uh, climate control here, the blower fan. This is a recirculate and fresh, and these are all your different HVAC settings. Um, like I said, there's a huge, huge uh, uh, glove box. Like, it's like, it just really gets in there. There's a lot of space in it, man. Um, yeah, okay. And then the fuses are hidden under here. All right, and yeah, so that's pretty much it about the Toyota Previa. And uh, you know, I've slept in this van for many, many times. You know, I, I love this van. You know, and I have a feeling the the Rav4 is just not going to be a very good RV. But um, I think it's a good middle ground between this and the Prius. Okay, and so oh yeah, yeah. There's also a uh, a rear air conditioning right here. Okay, you turn this fan on, and I think it. I think it'll actually blow, and I know it blows hot air because I've used it before to to cool, to cool the um, heat up the back. Okay, there's actually like a coolant package here, passage here. Or I think the AC goes to it also. So it's actually a very nice fan, all right. And I got this. These are the uh, the visors here. This is actually from an automatic because it says something about automatic oil temp. We don't have automatic. Okay. Um, and this is the kind of this the 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 old interior. This is the old uh, Previa interior, guys. It just has a beer clipped on to here. Okay, that it's not the Toyota interiors of the early '90s were not that nice, guys. <laughs> and and that sh that reflects on this van, right? I have seen newer Previas, and they are actually the interior is actually pretty nice on them. This this van did not have the nicest interiors. What I'm gonna say? Yeah, it's just literally it's a mirror that they just clipped onto the the visor here okay and then I, I don't know there's like a there's a there's a a back back seat passenger mirror right here so you can see what's going hey what are you guys doing back there man <laughs> uh, that's the vanity mirror that's what it's called and it doesn't even have a light on it too okay this one doesn't even have a mirror so yeah i mean it's a lot of the the stuff you know um I have to say, you know, one of the things I love about this van is everything still kind of works in it, all right? The only thing that really doesn't work is the tachometer, all right? The tachometer doesn't work, but every all the lights still work, well, except for that light that was on the side that I showed you. The, um, the transmission still shifts, <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, the, the cruise control still works, that's what I like. The cruise control on my Prius, it only works some of the time now because it's electronic, okay? This one is uh, like a mechanical, old school cruise control. It has like the, still the wires and stuff in, on it. And it still works. It still works to this day and it works pretty good. I think the center column thing broke here. Yeah, this is all broken here, so. And, and like the screws are broken on it so this this kind of it's kind of led a hard life is what i'm gonna say there's a little pocket here for stuff there's another pocket on the other side it's got power windows it's got power mirrors but only the the driver's side mirror works the mirrors do fold in too okay cool this is a sand dollar i got at the beach i did drive this on the beach and that's one. That's the reason I had that big compressor. So that's the reason I had that big compressor 
uh, right here is so I can inflate and deflate the tires really fast. This this compressor is really powerful, and you hook it up to the battery, and it'll char it'll it'll inflate your tires in like a minute or something, <laughs> really fast. If it's like got no air in it, um, really good. I think I did replace the I replaced the cooling system on this. That's one of the things you have to do on a Previa. If you ever overheat your Previa, that you know the motor is like kind of. It'll, the head gasket goes on it, man, and, and, and it's a pain in the ass to work on the engines on these. Um, but I, I heard it's actually not too bad working on these fans. The engine comes out pretty easily is what I want to say. So if you did need to do some kind of work on it, yeah, you could take the engine out. But yeah, you'd have to take it to a lift shop that has a lift, you know. Um, this has slotted and drilled brake rotors, all right. And it has, I think it has Metal Master brake pads on it. Um, so it gets better braking. That's what I'm going to say. I don't think I'm going to keep these Mitsubishi wheels. Um, it does have a pretty beefy front sway bar, um, but I have to say, like the the handling is all creaky and stuff on this. It's not very good, man. Um, I, I mean, like this side makes a bunch of cr creaking sounds when I move the steering wheel. It makes. Uh, I think the suspension needs to be rebuilt on this car. Like it must, it must need new bushings or or uh or ball joints or something you know or new sh new shocks i've never replaced any of that stuff on this you know i just kind of just drove it uh, and it's okay all right um yeah all right okay so there it is that is a uh, hades megas toyota previa it's got the subwoofer in it and everything uh let me see i got some souvenirs here i always keep them this is a supercharged emblem i got from the junkyard these are some sand dollars i got at pismo beach this is i think this has been the pismo beach twice i took this maybe i think i might have taken this three times to pismo beach um i will have pictures of everywhere i took this van all right guys at the end of the video this i got this at the m m kind of store in las vegas we were in las vegas for a while um, i got this at the china ranch this is like a, one of those kind of Native American crafts um, you can get. And I think that's it. Yeah, that's all the souvenirs. Oh, yeah, this is a rock. I think this is... I'm not 100%, but I think they got this from... Uh, it, this is from one of those volcanic uh, craters. Uh, Amboy. Amboy Crater. That's where you go. That's where I got that. I got this from Amboy Crater. That's a volcanic um, rock. The latch for the... Where the seats are right here, it's kind of weird. Like normally they would be on the outside, right? But they're on the inside on this. So I'm gonna say the seats are pretty comfortable. I'm really, I really like it. This is, it's very comfortable to drive. The suspension is good too. Like it soaks up the bumps pretty well, which is what I like. But I think the Rav4 ride will be better. The Prius ride is like shit. I'll tell you. <laughs> Yeah, I've got like two seat covers on this. Yeah, I got a seat cover on top of a seat cover. I've got this is actually the seat cover from my uh, from my Toyota van that I use. And I think I'm not sure, but I think the seat cover. I'm not really sure where the seat cover came from. I think I got it from my from my dad's Forerunner. I might be putting this in my Rav4 also. So okay, okay. So we'll close her up, and then uh, I'm going to talk about things I like and dislike about this van. <laughs> All right.